Hey, Dan. First question is coming from Dwight Janes with NBC Sports Northwest. Uh, Dan, uh, two questions related, actually. Uh, number one, the atmosphere inside of the arena for the scrimmage. How was that? Was it hard to get used to? And then uh, the second part of that question would be the shooting background. How difficult was that or was it difficult? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a huge difference. Um, warming up. The pregame stuff, you know, it's an empty arena. It's pretty quiet, you know, other than the music. You don't hear no chatter. Um, you know, so I think it was different for that reason. Once the game started, I mean, I just kind of got lost into the game. You know, I didn't really think much of it. So, um, so I can see how over time it'll become normal for us to just get out there and do what we got to do. As far as, you know, a few times on the screen, it was like, I lost them light in the background and it kind of just looked weird seeing it through the through the glass. Um, but other than that, I mean, that was, that was the only thing. That's what we saw on TV was the... Oh, the light through the glass? Yeah, yeah. That looked like it might be a problem. Yeah. I mean, I, when they asked me about it, I mentioned it to them. I'm pretty sure it won't be that way uh, going forward. Next question is coming from Jason Quick with The Athletic. Dane, just what were your impressions of uh, how you guys looked against Indiana? I thought, you know, especially to start the game, we looked really strong. We rebounded the ball well, uh, presence defensively. Um, did a lot of things that we have been doing in, in our many training camp. And, you know, in our, when our second group came in, you know, all of our young guys came in. They played really hard. Um, you know, it was a lot of things that we watched on film that it was – you know, just kind of teaching moments. And then I think in the third quarter, even our, our first group had a little bit of a drop off, you know, even in our communication. Um, after sitting for so long, I mean, it was, you know, I think it was obvious that we had uh, sat for a long time. Guys were a little bit stiff, but, um, you know, I think overall, it was a, you know, a pretty solid game for, for us not having a super long camp, um, not being able to have that much contact leading up to that point. Being off for four months, you know, I thought it was a pretty solid showing. Next question is coming from Casey Holdall with Trailblazers.com. Hi, Damian. Uh, kind of along those same lines, how would you how would you kind of summate or, or describe where you feel like you guys are at in terms of your preparation and being ready to go for that first seeding game uh, after that the uh, a couple or basically two weeks of practices and at least one scrimmage. I think we, I think we'll, we're in a good spot right now. And I think by, by the time we finish with our, our few scrimmages, I think we'll be ready to go. Um, you know, I think we, we've had a great camp. We've had great practices. We've been able to execute our offense, you know, better than we had all season long, you know, which is weird. But, I mean, we've executed better. we communicated better on defense. We made some adjustment in some of our coverages and how we rotate. Uh, we've added a few things on both ends of the floor that I think uh, suits our team better, especially with Nurk and Zach back. So, uh, you know, I think we'll be very well prepared, you know, for, you know, the 31st. Is there any one thing you feel like you guys are still needing to maybe make a little, a little progress on or you'd like to see a little, just maybe a little improvement on before that first game? I mean, we haven't been perfect, but I think um, as far as being ready to play, we, we're we ready to play. Uh, the only thing left for us to do is just get out there and, and get that game that game uh, experience, I guess. You know, like I said, because we haven't played in so long. Uh, the only way to truly knock that, that rust off is to get out there and play. So I think that's the, the next step for us. And once we start doing that or have more opportunities to do that, I think, every, you know, the things that we need to kind of tighten up and sharpen up will be um, easier to see. You know, but right now I think we've been sharp in practice. Um, we've had good practices. We've done a lot of things well on both ends of the floor. They've been high energy. Um, and I think the next step is just to, to play games and then, you know, come back and watch film and make corrections from there. Thanks a lot, Dan. Next question is coming from Aaron Ventress with the Oregonian. Hey, Damian. Can you hear me? Okay. Do, how much more intense do you expect uh, this next game to be from your 
you know, a standpoint in terms of how you attack it? Do you guys be, be more in game mode than maybe you were the other night or day? I think the first one was, you know, we knew that, you know, our minutes would be pretty limited and stretched out. So um, it wasn't quite the, the normal night, but I think going forward, we'll uh, be able to, I guess, attack the game as we would in a, in a normal game, more so than we did the first night. Okay. Next question is coming from Jamie Hudson with NBC Sports Northwest. Hey, Dame, with Zach, how do you see his role changing when he's with the starting group versus when he's with the second unit? I think regardless of which group he's in a game with, I think he's the same. Do you feel like he, he'll – he plays differently maybe with Nurk, alongside Nurk, or with Hassan. We, we haven't got to see him with Hassan, but do you feel like that'll be different playing alongside either of those? I think Nurk and Hassan are different players, so, you know, it might be opportunity for him to do different things with each guy, but I don't think his role really changes. He'll, um, I think he'll be the same defensively. You know, Zach is, is one of our best defenders. You know, he's a good rebounder. He's tough. Um, Great defender, you know, he can switch one through five and, and have an impact on the game that way. Um, he'll be, you know, picking and popping and finding the, those spots in the dunker, um, regardless of which group or which which one of our five men he's in the game with. So, um, like I said, I don't think much changes for him, um, regardless of which group he's in the game with. The next question is coming from Brooke Olsendam with Trailblazers Broadcasting. Hi, Dame. Yep. Um, I know that you've been always very supportive of the WNBA and I, not only you, but so many guys in your team and across the NBA as a whole today are wearing those sweatshirts. Why was it important for you to show your support? And I don't know if you even had a chance, but did you get a chance to see any of, of their games today, games so far? I watched the, I watched the uh, Liberty and the Storm. I watched the first three quarters of that game we got to catch before we left for practice. Um, I think it's important to support them because – um, you know, at the end of the day, they are a, a professional league just like we are. And, you know, just like we came here playing in the bubble and made that sacrifice, um, stepping away from our families and coming, you know, to, to do what we love, they're doing the same thing. And um, I also realize that they're not doing it under the same conditions that we are. You know, I think our situation has been uh, laid out as, as possible for us. Um, and, you know, I, I've seen some of the conditions that they're doing it under. Know, which I wish was better, um, but I think uh, the fact that they're doing the same thing that we're doing, we should be acknowledging them for what they're doing and um, all of the causes that they're standing up for. Um, you know, they're making a statement just like we are. Um, so I, I feel like every guy that you see wearing these hoodies today was, you know, in support of their league and all the women uh, that, that chose to participate. And how did you feel Sabrina did in her WNBA debut? She, I thought she did well. Um, when you go from college to, you know, to the pros, it's a difference. And, uh, you know, it takes time to get adjusted and to get comfortable. Uh, so it's natural to, to, you know, to have a few bumps in the road. Um, but I thought her demeanor was great. You know, I thought she she looked confident. Uh, but it's a it's an adjustment. You know, and I think she'll adjust just fine. Next question is coming from Casey Holdall with Trailblazers.com. Damien, how, how much of the actual scrimmages uh, there at the bubble have you been watching? And and kind of what were your thoughts and, and emotions about watching some of that stuff? I know that you're a guy who, during the regular season, you talk about you watch basically every game. You go home, you turn on games. Are you doing that in the bubble? And, and as someone who I, I think maybe just a, a little reluctant about maybe coming there at a certain point, like, has that made you feel better about going? Or, or has it changed at all your opinion just about being there, seeing those games? I mean, I've tried to watch what games I could watch. Um, you know, it's kind of hard when we're here. It's not like I'm at home and I can find it on my on my own TV, you know, and stuff like that. We're in a, a hotel, so it's a little more difficult. Um, but I have tried to, to catch the games I could, you know, on, whether that's on a laptop uh, that I'm having Yim try to set up a game or something like that. Um, but the only reason that I said that um, I wouldn't participate was if we didn't have a chance to play in the playoffs. It didn't have nothing to do with it. Anything else. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to apply that, Dave. My bad. That's all good. 
All right, we'll go ahead and call it there. Thank you, Damien. Okay, Coach. Um.